Okay, welcome to another series on the low oil pressure problem I've been having on my 1986 300 SE. Uh, so I've gone into a lot more detail on my website classicjalopy.com. So if you go there, you'll see the um, all the things I've I've done in a lot more detail. But the high level was I was driving the car and all of a sudden the oil pressure went a lot lower than it should be. So you know at idle it was sort of around 0.3. Uh, it would get up to about one and a half if you were driving along, but it wasn't even close to what it used to be and um, and what it should be on the car. So I, I wanted to obviously get to the bottom of that because I didn't want to end up destroying the engine. So the first thing I did was an oil filter change. Um, I wanted to rule out really sort of basic stuff like is the oil contaminated with coolant or petrol or is there something wrong with the oil filter itself and and also by doing an oil change I would see if there was anything untoward coming out of the oil. Uh, the oil looked fine, the car was due for an oil change anyway, I didn't see any anything untoward. Uh, I didn't save that old oil filter, uh, in retrospect I probably should have and cut it open. Uh, the M103 uses a one of these spin-on type oil filters. I personally don't like them because you can't um, easily see the filter itself you have to cut it open versus on the, the V8 cars you can actually look at the filter and, and see if there's anything there um, I've always been a bit surprised that the spin-on conversions are so big in some of the Jaguar circles because you lose so much by not being able to look at the filter anyway I, I didn't and so because at that point I didn't think I had a major problem I was starting to think that it was likely a sender or gauge problem so the next thing I did is I got a new sender unit and I changed the sender unit. I'd found lots and lots of people who'd had problems with their sender unit causing low oil pressure. But in my case, the new unit read exactly the same as the old one. So that was a bust. The next thing I did was get a mechanical oil pressure gauge because I wanted to test the instrument cluster. And so... I, um, I connected that and that read the same as the instrument cluster. So I knew I had low oil pressure. So um, based on a tip on the Osbens forum, I went and took the cam cover off and checked that camshaft oiler tube. I was, um, you know, someone else on there had experience where that had sort of come loose and was spurting oil everywhere. So that, that seemed like a good thing for me to do myself. So I, I took the cam cover off and um, that looked fine. I, I, was, I started the car with the cam cover removed and I was able to see oil flow, you know, oil dripping over the, um, the cams and sort of pooling up in that area. Um, I've never actually run the car before with it off with normal oil pressure, so I couldn't really compare it to anything, but I was getting flow up there, but not, um, you know, oil spurting everywhere and causing low oil pressure. So the next step was to have take the sump off and have a look at the oil pump itself. At that point, I was thinking maybe something's clogged the screen. You know, I'd found other people on forums saying that they'd had um, like guides disintegrating and clogging the screen and so on. Now on the 103, there's a big one piece uh, sump. So you can't like on the V8s, you can just screw that little bottom piece off and have a look yourself. Um, I didn't want to start raising the engine and doing all that, so I thought at this point it's worth taking it to an experienced mechanic to to do this. So he took the raised the engine, took the sump off, um, and had a look at the pump. And it was pretty. Once he got it off, it was pretty apparent what had happened. Um, this piece in front of me here is the bit that we saved. The other piece that has the screen in it. The screen was fine. There was um, nothing clogging it. The, it was undamaged. So the damage to the pump I'm about to show you was caused by some kind of internal failure. And the first thing that you can see is there's this big chunk. And where my finger is, there's this big chunk out of the pump here. There's also, if I get in the light here, there's a big chunk out of the pump in the bottom there. And I've already got these loosened up a bit. Oh, I thought I had.
got it so you can see these impellers this first one here how scored and big chunks taken out of it you know it's you know every single one of them has got some kind of damage if we set this that one down and get the next one up Um, you can see the same thing in that each one of them is even worse scored. Every one has, has issues um, from, from this. And when we have a look at inside the housing, you can see that chunk. You won't be able to see it in the light, but I can feel scoring up here or even worse there. And you can see this big hole. And my theory is this piece came off for some reason or another. It got mashed up in the gears, scoring them, creating the problems, made this hole. This is a thinner bit. And then ultimately, the these pieces got caught in the, um, in the oil filter somewhere. Um, I'm, I'd never found any debris. So in the oil, when I did the oil change, when the sump was dropped, that was carefully inspected for any debris. I didn't see any in the top of the engine. So... I'm really hoping that forced oil filter that I never kept is where all that debris is. Um, you know, I'll have to, I guess, carefully monitor the engine over the next weeks to months and see if I'm noticing anything wrong with it. Um, you know, as I said before, I, sh I really should have kept that old oil filter. But nevertheless, it, it seems to be running really well now. I've driven it a couple of hundred kilometers. And um, so overall, I've, I'm feeling pretty good that by changing this oil pump i've managed to to save the engine um the car is an 86 model with 295 000 k's on the clock i don't have any history for this car i i don't know how many in reality are there um probably slightly more when i got the car the odometer had stopped but it was an older owner who really hadn't used the car much in the last couple of years and it um I don't think it had stopped for more than a couple of years. So it's probably in the order of around 300,000 Ks or so on the motor. Um, this does appear to be the original pump. It's a Mercedes-Benz pump. It's got 1985 on it somewhere or other. Yeah, over here, it'll be a bit hard to see because of sort of encrusted with oil. Um, and certainly, I haven't found evidence of people having sort of failures like this. The the mechanic who did this for me, who's quite experienced, he's been working on these cars for years, he'd not seen one fail so fundamentally without something coming through the screen or, or you know, clogging it up or whatever. So I thought people would find it interesting to see how badly a um, one of these pumps can fail. Now, it's been replaced with a Febby pump. Um, I was, you know, Febby is not normally a, a brand I would want to use on something as integral to the motor, but there is another uh, YouTube channel called MMWA where there's a, it's another Australian Mercedes-Benz based YouTube channel. Um, the owner of that channel has a couple of W124s and has rebuilt that engine. And I, I remember from a couple of months ago, maybe it was sometime last year, I think, when he got the Febby oil pump um it was made in germany and so that made me feel like it was probably better than some other things that have been you know offshored um the one that i got was a mark, mark made in west germany so i can only assume it sat on the shelf for since the before the foil of the boiling wall there in the in the numbers below that there is a 2018 in those numbers but i think that's more of some kind of a part number rather than it was made a couple of years back i I just don't think they'd be selling too many 103 oil pumps, really. And um, given that if the engine fundamentally failed, there's still enough used used engines out there that you would um, be less likely to rebuild one. And I don't think failures like I've seen on this pump are particularly common. Um, so, you know, I'd, certainly an interesting failure. I'll be updating ClassicJalopy.com with any further developments on this. If there's anything that warrants it, I'll, I'll make another little video. Because I think the video is a lot easier than photos to really see some of this damage to the pump um, that you, you're not going to see if I, I, I take a bunch of photos and, and sort of write it up. Um, and obviously some of the other projects on the car that I'll, I'll be working on over the coming months. 
So thanks for watching and um, tune back into classicjalopy.com for more updates.